This is the sound of survival. Where I went, different melodies came to me. All those pain, all the suffering. Shoni Alex Braun tapping into his talents during a time of great tragedy. He was able to survive the camps, I believe, and I think he would tell you the same thing, partially because he played his violin for the SS officers and the Nazis. At 13 years old, Braun arrived at Auschwitz, the first of four concentration camps he endured. His daughter, Dinah Braun Griffin, says her dad watched family members and others killed right in front of him. I don't really know how you come away from that and not be bitter and just completely screwed up in the head. Instead, the child prodigy violinist's mind filled with music. While in captivity, Braun composed a five-movement piece, the Symphony of the Holocaust. His story struck a chord with Greg DeHart, a documentary filmmaker. How he was able to pick himself up and to transform this, you know, the second half of his life was a miracle to me. DeHart set out to direct and produce a film sharing Braun's story. I love this film and I just want everybody to see it. Braun married Sherry, another survivor, after the war and immigrated to the United States, landing in Ohio. Cleveland was um, a really important place in his life. And it's in Cleveland where Braun was noticed once again for his talents on the violin, eventually moving the family to Los Angeles, going on to perform in film films and TV and write more than 200 other musical pieces, but only one symphony. I was invited to play with the Dayton Philharmonic Orchestra, and that's where it was world debuted. It was Braun's dream to play his 17-minute composition at Auschwitz, where suffering sparked the symphony. He died before making the trip. Never thought I would ever go there. But for this, I made that exception, and I'm so happy that I did. Braun's daughter and family fulfilling his dream by bringing his music to the concentration camp's gates. Knowing each movement and the meanings behind them and hearing them, it, um, it's emotional. It's always emotional. The journey documented by DeHart, hoping to share a message of forgiveness and healing. As my dad would say, everybody bleeds the same, so we all are alike. Jenna Jordan, Spectrum News.